All right, today's lesson is 6-3, day two. Our objectives today are to solve systems of linear equations in two variables by elimination. And then we're gonna solve contextual problems involving systems of linear equations and interpret the solutions. We're gonna wait and do two of the contextual problems in class um, and one of them on your video. <clears throat> So in, previous, in the previous lesson, you learned how to multiply by one, equa one equation by negative one in order to produce opposites that can be eliminated. Some systems will require one or both equations to be multiplied by a different number in order to produce these opposites. So in other words, the first day was pretty simple. We looked at it and said, okay, this, there's either the same number in front of the X or there's the same number in front of the Y. And we just maybe had to turn one of them negative in order to get them to eliminate. The ones today aren't going to be as easy to eliminate. We're going to have to multiply one or both of the equations by something a little bit more than just a negative one. Here's our first one. Go ahead and write that down. Again, do your little braces right here, just like you did in, the, um, in day one, and write down your two equations for your system. You don't have to write this all by elimination. We know that we're using elimination today. And don't write anything down just yet. I'll tell you when to start writing. It says in 6, 3a, we multiplied by negative 1 to create opposite terms. That won't work for this problem. What could you multiply by to create opposite variable terms? Well, if we wanted to eliminate the x's here, I have a 1 and a negative 3. So I could actually just flip those, and it would make them eliminate. I'm going to multiply the top by 3 and the bottom by one. Now the negative's not gonna go with it because I need one of them to be positive and one of them to be negative in order for them to eliminate. If I wanted to eliminate the y's here, then I could multiply the top one by the one on the bottom and the bottom one by the two that's on the top to get the y's to eliminate. Now here they're both positive and I need one of them to be negative. So I have to make either the one or the two negative. It doesn't matter which one. Here I chose to make the two negative. So again, you can choose whether or not you want to eliminate the X's or whether or not you wanted to eliminate the Y's. So again, to eliminate X's, three and one, I would just flip those. Here, I would multiply the, the bottom by the negative two and the top by the one. Now in our case, especially for the video, we're gonna go with eliminating the X's each and every time, just because I think that's a good method to use and it works each and every time. I'm gonna switch to notebook paper and show you how this works. All right, so right here, again, I've written down my problem. I have my little um, squiggly or brace right here to show that this is a system. Okay, I'm going to rewrite these down here, and I'm actually going to put a 1 in front of the X because we know that there's a 1 if nothing else is there. So I'm going to say 1X plus 2Y equals 11, and then negative 3X, and I can put plus 1Y equals negative 5 just to make sure I have a number in front of all of those. So again, like I said before, we're always going to eliminate the X's just because it always works and it's kind of just a system to go by here. The top one, I'm going to multiply by this bottom number, which is a 3. The bottom number, I'm going to multiply by this top one, which is a 1. Then I'm going to look. I've already got one positive and one negative. So I don't have to worry about the negatives here. So both of these are going to be positive. So we're going to multiply everything in here by 3. So when I bring this one over, 3 times 1 is 3. So 3x plus 3 times 2y is 6y. And then 3 times 11 is 33. Then here I'm going to multiply everything by 1. And actually multiplying everything by 1 doesn't do anything at all. So I'm still going to have negative 3x plus 1y equals negative 5. <coughs> So then if you look, I have a positive 3x and a negative 3x. And from here, it's exactly like what we did yesterday. We're going to eliminate the x's, add the y's, and add the numbers. 6 and 1 gives me 7, so 7y. And then 33 plus negative 5, or minus 5, is 28. Then I need to get the y by itself, so I'm going to divide both sides by 7. And y is going to equal... Four. So now I have one of my variables. I know that y is 4. Now I need to go back and actually find x. So to find x, I'm going to take either one of these equations. It doesn't matter which one. I usually go with the one with the smaller numbers. 
But again, it does not matter which one you go with. Um, in this case, I'm going to go with the top one. And I'm going to say x plus 2. So I'm going to go with this one, x plus 2. And instead of y, I'm going to put in a 4. Oops. So times 4 equals 11. So again, I just took this top equation just the way it looked. And instead of y, I plugged in a 4. 2 times 4 is 8. So x plus 8 equals 11. And then if I subtract that 8, I know what x is equal to. And x is equal to 11 minus 8 is 3. So now I've found my x and I've found my y. I'm going to put them in my point 3, comma 4. So there is my answer. That is my x and y ordered pair. That is my solution to my system. If I were to graph these, they would cross or intersect at the point 3, 4. Now that I've actually got my answer, I need to go back and check my answer. See if I've got enough room over here to the side to do my check. I'm going to check 3, 4. And again, I always like to just put X and Y just to make sure that I don't get the two of them confused or accidentally plug them in somewhere where they shouldn't go. I'm going to take this first equation. Again, always go back to the original to check. And instead of X, I'm going to plug in a 3. And instead of Y, I'm going to plug in a 4. I'm just going to make sure that it works. 2 times 4 is 8. 3 plus 8 is 11. So that checks out. Then I'm going to go back to this original. Negative 3x plus y equals negative 5. And again, everywhere I see an x, I'm going to plug in a 3. Everywhere I see a y, I'm going to plug in a 4. I'm going to say negative 3 times 3 is negative 9. Negative 9 plus 4 is negative 5, and negative 5 equals negative 5, so it checks out. So that is actually my answer. Please make sure that you have all of the work and the check written before you move on. You can pause the video now if you need to. All right, this one's number two. Don't write anything down until I tell you to. We're going to switch back over to notebook paper in just a minute, and you can start writing then. But I want to look at this problem first. It says solve, and we have 6x equals 5y minus 12, and 8x plus 3y equals 13. Now here we have the problem, the fact that not everything is lined up, so we need to take care of that first. So I'm going to switch to notebook paper and take care of that. All right, so you can go ahead and write this down. Now we've got our little brace to show that this is a system. Up here we have 6x equals 5y minus 12, and then at the bottom we have 8x plus 3y equals 13. Now again, we talked about a second ago how these aren't lining up. My equal sign's not in the right place here. I need my x, then plus or minus my y equals some number. And the bottom one is fine because it looks x plus y equals a number. But this one right here, I need to change and get it in the correct order. So I'm going to say 6x equals 5y minus 12, and I need to move that y over here with the x, and it's a positive 5y, so I'm going to do the opposite and subtract it. So then I get 6x minus 5y equals negative 12, and then I'm going to go ahead and bring this one right down here, so 8x plus 3y equals 13. So there's my new system where everything's lined up, my x, my y's, and my numbers. And again, my equal signs also have to be lined up there. All right, so again, you're going to put your pencil down for just a second. And we're going to look and see what all we can multiply by, and then we're going to go back to your notebook paper, okay? This over here to the left is exactly what we just did where we subtracted the 5y and we got them lined up. We have this written on our paper. All right, so now we need to see, and we need to look and see what all we can multiply by. If we want to eliminate the x's, this is there are several ways to eliminate um, a variable in this one. Here, if I want to eliminate the y's, again, I'm going to put the 5 on the bottom and the 3 on the top. One's already positive and one's already negative, so we don't have to worry about that over here. And if I multiply everything on the top by 3 and everything on the bottom by 5, my y's will cancel. If I wanted my x's to cancel, I could also multiply everything in the top by 4 and everything in the bottom by negative 3. 
And the reason that this works is 4 times 6 is 24, and three, negative 3 times 8 is negative 24, so these would both turn into positive and negative 24x, and they could, they could cancel as well. Or I can do, well, again, what we're going to do each and every time is eliminate the x's by taking the one on the top, the 6, and putting it on the bottom, taking the 8 on the bottom and putting it on the top, and saying, okay, both of these are positive, and I need one of them to be negative, so we're going to put a negative with one of those numbers. So again, several different ways, and again, you can use whatever method, or you can eliminate whatever you want to when it comes time to do your assignment. I just want to show you that there are multiple ways to work the problem. Now we're going to head back to our notebook paper. All right, so again, like we said, we, what we're going to do in order to eliminate is we're always going to eliminate those x's by taking the one on the bottom and putting it on the top, taking the one on the top and putting it on the bottom. And then we're going to look and say, okay, is one positive and one negative? No, they're both positive, which means one of these numbers that we wrote down has to be negative, not both of them, just one of them. So now I'm going to multiply everything in the top by 8, everything in the bottom by negative 6. Or 8 times 6x is 48x minus 8 times 5y is negative 40y equals 8 times negative 12 is negative 96. And then on the bottom, negative 6 times 8x is again negative 48x. Negative 6 times 3 is negative 18y. And negative 6 times 13 is negative 78. Or again, you could have wrote these as plus a negative and plus a negative. That's up to you. If you like to do that, go for it. So then here, my, my positive 48x and my negative 48x are going to cancel. I'm going to add up my y's and add up my numbers here. Negative 40y plus negative 18y is going to give me negative 58y. Negative 96 plus negative 78 gives me negative 174. Divide both sides by negative 58. And y here is going to be a positive 3 because a negative divided by negative turns into a positive. So now I've found my y. My y is 3. Now I've got to go back and find my x. So we're going to go back to one of the originals and solve for our x. And I'm going to take this one right here, and I'm going to say 6x equals 5 times instead of y, I'm going to put a 3 minus 12. I'm going to work this one out. We've got 6x equals 5 times 3 is 15 minus 12. 15 minus 12 is 3. Then I'm going to divide both sides by 6. And x is going to equal either 1 half, or we're going to write that as 0.5 or 0 0.5. Again, if it gives you a nice decimal, um, go ahead and use that decimal. It makes it easier to check with. I'm going to see if I can squeeze my check in here over here to the right. Maybe I can. All right, <clears throat> then we're going to write this as our ordered pair. My X always comes first, then my Y. So we're going to check 0 0.5 and 3. Again, I like to label those up here just to make sure that I don't put them in the wrong place. Go back to our original, so we're going to say 6 times 0 0.5 equals 5 times 3 minus 12. Here, 6 times 0 0.5 is 3. This gives me 15 minus 12, which is also 3, and 3 equals 3, so that checks out. Then we're going to go down here to this next one. We're going to say 8 times x, which is 0, negative 0.5 plus 3 times 3 equals 13. 8 times 0.5 is 4. 3 times 3 is 9. 4 plus 9 is 13, and 13 equals 13, and that one checks out as well. 
Again, take a minute, make sure you have all the work and the check written for this one before you move on. If you need to pause the video now, um, feel free to do that. All right, go ahead and write down number three. You have 2y equals 5x plus 32, and 2x plus 3y equals 10. The first thing we have to do here is the same first thing that we've been doing all along. We have to get them both in the same order so that they match, they line up equally. So you have your 2y equals 5x plus 32. So we have to first fix that. So let's go ahead and bring it down here and rewrite it. 2y equals 5x plus 32. And I'm going to have to subtract my 5x from both sides in order to make these line up. So that's going to give me negative 5x, because again, I'm putting this in standard form, negative 5x plus 2y equals 32, because these cancel and these are not like terms and they cannot be combined. So that's my first equation. And then I have 2x plus 3y equals 10. So I can go ahead and bring this down. 2x plus 3y equals 10. So now I have to figure out how I'm going to eliminate. I have been canceling my x's all along, so that's what we're going to stick with. One is already negative and one is already positive, so I don't have to multiply by a negative and a positive. I just multiply both by a positive number. So here I'm going to multiply this one by 2, and I'm going to multiply this one by 5 because I have a 2 here and a 5 here. So that's going to make them cancel. I have to multiply every single thing in that equation by the number on the outside of the parentheses. So 2 times negative 5x gives me negative 10x. 2 times 2y gives me 4y. And 2 times 32 gives me 64. So 2 times everything inside the parentheses. Here I'm going to multiply everything by 5. 5 times 2x gives me 10x, 5 times 3y gives me positive 15y equals, and then 5 times 10 gives me 50. So now I'm ready to go ahead and combine my like terms and solve for y. My negative 10x and my 10 cancel. They eliminate. That was the whole point of the process we just went through. 4y plus 15y gives me 19y. And 64 plus 50 gives me 114. So I'm almost done here solving for y. Now I have to get y by itself. I know when a letter and a number are touching, like they are here, they're being multiplied, and I have to divide to undo that multiplication. So I'm going to divide both sides by 19. And 114 divided by 19 I'll go ahead and help you out with that if you don't have a calculator. It is y equals 6. So my y equals 6. Now I have to go back and substitute in to solve for x. So let's take our second equation here. 2x plus 3y equals 10. And I'm going to plug in this 6 for y. So that's going to give me 2x plus 3 times 6 equals 10. 3 times 6 gives me 18. Bring down my 2x, my plus sign, and my equals 10 over here. Now I'm going to subtract 18 from both sides. 10 minus 18 is going to give me negative 8. Bring down my equal sign and bring down my 2x. Now I'm going to divide both sides by 2 to get x by itself. It's going to give me x equals negative 4. So if x equals negative 4 and y equals 6, then as an ordered pair, it's going to be written negative 4, comma, 6. And that is my answer. Because that's my answer, I have to now check that answer. I'm going to come back to my original problem, the absolute original problem. And we're going to write our check down here. So I have 2y, and I know that y is 6, equals 5 times x, or negative 4, 
plus 32. 2 times 6 <clears throat> gives me 12. 5 times 4, excuse me, 5 times negative 4 gives me negative 20 plus 32. 12 equals negative 20 plus 32 is 12. So that checks. Now my other equation, 2 times x, I'm up here now, 2 times x is negative 4 plus 3 times y, which is 6, equals 10. 2 times negative 4 gives me negative 8 plus 3 times 6 gives me 18. Negative 8 plus 18 equals 10 and 10 equals 10. So that checks out as well. Make sure that you have all of that work and your checks written down before you move on. You can pause the video now if you need to. All right, for number four, I want you to go ahead and write down the problem. 2x minus 7y equals 31, and 3x plus 4y equals negative 26. I want you to go ahead and pause the video now and try to work this one on your own. Your two equations are already lined up. You're eliminating by the x terms. Just keep in mind that these are both positive, so you will have to multiply by a negative. Go ahead again and pause the video now and try this one on your own. We'll bring up the work and you can check your answer in just a moment. All right, so this is what your work should look like to begin with here. You've lined up your equations. You've multiplied by the 3 on top and the negative 2 on the bottom. You've distributed those terms to everything inside the equation. And then you've eliminated your x's and you're left with y equals negative 5. Make sure that this work matches your work. If you made errors, make sure you understand where you made errors and go ahead and get those fixed now. You can pause the video if you need to. Once you have your work fixed there, make sure that you've gone ahead and solved for x as well. Pause the video now if you haven't already done that and then we'll bring up that work for you to check your answer as well. This is what your work should look like here where you've solved for x. You've substituted in your negative five for y and worked it out to solve for x and you should have gotten that x equals negative two. Make sure that you have also checked this solution, negative 2 comma negative 5. If you have not already done so, go ahead and pause the video now and do that. We'll bring up the work so you can check it. You're plugging in negative 2 and 5 for x and y respectively into the original equations, both of them. All right, these are your checks down here. You should have both of these worked out completely. And you should find that 31 equals 31 and negative 26 equals negative 26. If you're in our regular classes, this example is the last one on your video for today. The other two uh, word problems we will be doing in class tomorrow. If you are at alternative school, you need to go ahead and continue watching because you're going to need to see the next two examples in order to be able to do your assignment. So again, these two examples are going to be covered in class, but for those of you who will not be in class for this lesson, you need to go ahead and follow along and take the notes for number six and seven. The difference between the length and width of a rectangle is three units. The perimeter is 34 units. Write and solve a system of equations to determine the length and width of the rectangle. The hint here is the equation for perimeter, which is P equals two times length plus two times width. So if the length and the width, the difference between the length and the width is three units, we know that difference means to subtract, so length minus width equals three. The perimeter is 34 units because they gave us that in the original problem, so we're gonna plug in a 34 into this equation for P. 2L plus 2W equals 34. You might be able to see already here that L, our L's line up and our W's line up, and then our equal sign lines up, which is important, and then our three and our 34 line up. So that is actually going to be our system, and now we're going to solve it by elimination. So there's an understood one in front of this L, and there's obviously a two in front of that L. So we're writing our system so that the terms are aligned, and they already are. And then again, we've put this understood one here in front of the L. Now we multiply by the opposite term, so we're gonna multiply this one by negative two and this one by positive one. Oh, sorry. We're gonna multiply this one by positive two and this one by negative one. Um, and then we're going to distribute that, and it's going to give us 2 times 1 equals 2, 2 times 1, negative 1 equals negative 2, 2 times 3 equals 6, 
negative 1 times 2 equals negative 2, negative 1 times positive 2 equals negative 2, and then negative 1 times 34 obviously equals negative 34. Our negative, our two L's cancel here, so we're left with 0 minus 4W. We're going to multiply both sides by negative 4, and it's going to give us W equals 7. Now we're going to choose an original equation to substitute into. So we can multiply, we can substitute in for W, L minus 7 equals 3. Solve for W, I'm sorry, solve for L. Add 7 on both sides, and it's going to give us length equals 10, width equals 7. Make sure that you have that work written down before you move on. Right, number seven says Mr. Carr bought 12 pack packages of pens and pencils for his classroom. He spent $20. The pencils were $1.25 per pack and the pens were $2.50 per pack. Define the variables, write and solve a system of linear equa or a system of equations to determine how many of each he bought. So we're going to let X represent the number of packages of pencils he bought and Y to represent the number of packages of pens he bought. We know that he bought 12 packages total, which means his packages of pencils and pens added together should give us 12. So that's X plus Y equals 12. The total amount he spent was $20. So I have a dollar and 25 cents times my number of pen or my number of pencils packages plus 2.5 or 2.50 times the number of pen packages he bought, and that's going to equal $20 total. So there is my two um, equations for my system. So we've defined our variables by telling what X represents and what Y represents. And we've written our two equations for our system. Now we want to solve that system. All right, so for number seven, this is what we ended up with whenever we wrote our two um, equations for our system. Now we're going to solve. Now our X's line up, our Y's line up, and our numbers line up. So in order to get rid of the X's, I'm going to multiply the top one by a negative 1 because, again, I can go through and put a 1 here and a 1 there. So I'm going to flip the 1 to the bottom and put the 1.25 on the top. They're both positive right now, and I need one of them to be negative, so I'm going to make that 1 right there negative. Multiply through, the top one becomes 1.25x plus 1.25y equals 15 when I multiply everything by 1.25. The bottom one becomes negative 1.25x minus 2.5y equals negative 20 when I multiply everything by negative 1. So now right here my x's are going to cancel because I have a positive 1.25 and a negative 1.25. I'm going to add up my y's. And add up my numbers, and I get negative 1.25 equals negative 5. Divide and y equals 4. Now, as far as what this means, this means that he bought four packages of pins, because remember, the y's are the pins. Now, I need to go back and figure out how many um, pencils he bought. So I'm going to go back to one of my original equations. I'm going to go back to this one, because it doesn't have any decimals in it. And instead of y, I'm going to plug in a 4. So I plugged in 4 for y here. I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. And x is going to give me 8. So my answer is 8, 4, because he bought 8 packages of pencils and 4 packages of pens. And if I check that, it works out. If I put in 8 plus 4, that gives me 12. 8 times 1.5 plus 4 times 2.5 equals 10 plus 10, which is 20. So it works out for both. Please make sure you have all of that work written before you move on. You can pause the video now if you need to. All right, this is the end of your video. Thank you for watching.